What is up, Rambler Nation? I'm Joe Flaherty, joined by Chris Lehman. And if you might not have noticed, this isn't Pearson and Wabash. Where are we, Joe? We're at Gentile Arena. We're courtside for Midnight Madness. This isn't Sparta, but this is madness. Madness. And this is a celebration held every year to celebrate the formal introduction or so we thought, yeah. to the practice season, but that kind of changed this year, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, actually this year, most schools had their date moved up two weeks so that right. they would have a little bit more time to practice, but at Loyola, we're old school. We're sticking to the original oh, yeah. date. We don't we don't change from anything. We're, we're not the only, we're ones, not the only ones. No, number one ranked Kentucky is staying. They have their Midnight Madness tonight. Right. Number four, Duke, as well as our new conference rivals, number 16, Wichita State. So and that's they're the cream of the right crop, yeah. and if they're doing it, we should probably we do should it We should probably too. do it too. Yeah. Tell me sense. about what we got going on down here, though. Oh, we got plenty of events, as always. We got free food. We got free shirts, we got musical chairs, we got knockout, we got, man, what else? We got fans and drills, they're we coming out here, yeah. joining the teams and drills. We got people shooting for tuition, they're gonna be making money and it's not Johnny Manziel. Mm -hmm. We got three point contests, we got a dunk contest, we got interviews with everyone, everyone. in those contests, yep. who's, with the winners that is, coming up later. But just chew on this for a little bit. Yeah. Um, this could be the start of the Milton Doyle era Milton here, Doyle. and we're going to hear a lot about him later in the show. You're going to know exactly why yeah. by the end of the show. And Milton, Milton, this could be Milton's night. I, I think it could be, and I'm as stoked as anybody for this night. Right. But let's take a step back really quick and look at everything else that's going on for Ramblers Athletics right, right. now. Because life goes um, Let's start with men's volleyball. Actually, their schedule was released, and as of right now, they finished last. Or they finished top nine in the total national rankings, right. and they went to their first ever ever Final Four. Right. And so I'm really excited about that. Uh, they're sticking to the MEVA Conference this year. They didn't switch to the Valley like all the other teams did mm -hmm. because the MEVA, in volleyball there's less teams. That's where the good competition is right yeah, there. So they want to stay good. right there. Uh, we got 15 home games coming up this year, including our season opener against the two-time defending champ, UC Irvine, who actually, that's a season opener, so I'm really excited for that one right there. And then the, and day the after. next day, they play BYU, who was the national runner-up. So that's just a really good start to the season. It's a gauntlet early. And all throughout the season, they play teams like Ball State, Penn State, Ohio State, all the states. They're playing every, state. every single team out there that's all from the state. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> so, and the biggest thing for me this year is we're actually hosting the Final Four this year. Right. And so that's just extra motivation for them to get out and make sure they make the tournament for the second year in a row. So there's no secret that the men's team's really good, right. and they're going to be defending this court. And, you know, they're, they're here pretty much every year showing love for both basketball Absolutely. teams. And Joaquin Carrick actually caught up with a couple of them to play what is still America's favorite game show, according to that poll that I made up last year. Yeah, remember it that? will always be. I remember that, yeah. The Weekly Ramble. Take it away, Joaquin. Hello, and welcome to what Joe has aptly named the world-famous Weekly Ramble. We rival only with, and only with, The Price is Right. But um, tonight I'm here standing with two people, and you know they say they say that uh, you look taller on TV. Well, that's really not the case when you're standing next to a volleyball player. So uh, on my right I have Thomas Jeske, and on my left Trevor Devotny. Okay, three questions I have for you tonight. Um, we are going to start with you first. Uh, my first question is, who is going to win the World Series? We got the Dodgers, Cardinals, Red Sox, and Tigers. Who's going to win as of today? Uh, that's that's an easy question. You know, I'm glad you asked. It's the Tigers. Justin Verlander. I don't know if you guys know about him. I mean, he's throwing 99 in the bottom of the ninth, so it's not really a question at this point. All right, all right, and uh, how about you? I said the St. Louis Cardinals, because they had to play the Milwaukee Brewers. <laughs> Anything, that, that's it? Yeah, they're a great team. They can beat them, they can beat anyone. Okay, well, all right, that's our first question. You know, St. Louis is a good team. Um, they seem to go far every year, but this year, I think, is the year they didn't make it against the Giants, but they will against whoever wins out of the NL. Uh, my second question tonight is about the NFL. So, uh, who are your favorite teams so far? Who's the best team this year so far? We're going to start with you. Green Bay Packers. Uh, no one can stop Aaron Rodgers, especially not the Chicago Bears. Enough said. All right, all right. So they're taking, they're taking the uh, NFC this year? Yeah, they're, they're bringing it back. Okay. It's a title time. All right, and how about you? Uh, I'm going to go with the Denver Broncos. Peyton Manning, no Sean Moreno, Wes Welker. Peyton, Peyton and Wes Welker, they're just too good right now. All right. Definitely better than the Packers. No, no, no. Aaron Rodgers has been a perennially good player. I like what he's bringing this year. But, again, I'm going I'm to have to go with the Broncos. Peyton Manning has been off to a fantastic... What are they, 6-0? All right, 6-0. And, oh, six and, oh, and uh, yeah, they, so I, think, I think the Packers have a loss. So. We'll yeah. bring it back. All right. <laughs> And my last question for you tonight is about the NBA. All right, so we know who the best teams are going to be. The Bulls, the Heat, the, um, on the, in the West Coast, we're going to have uh, the OKC and the Spurs. So uh, who are your sleeper teams today? All right, we're going to go with you first. 
Sleeper is probably the Brooklyn Nets, just because uh, they, they recently acquired Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. They, they had Darren Williams, so it's a good starting squad to work around, you know? Okay, okay, and how about you? I'm gonna have to go with the Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> yeah, met a lot of good transactions this offseason. Got a new court design, it's gonna be great. Ready to ride. Milwaukee Bucks. All right, all right. Well, you know what? Um, I think the Nets are going to be really good this year. Uh, Rick Lopez is one of the top, team, oh, top uh, centers in the NBA. But I wouldn't consider them to be a true sleeper, so I am going to go with the Milwaukee Bucks this year. To be, to you, had, you had to win one. You had to win one. So uh, with the Detroit Tigers and the Denver Broncos, you took two of the points tonight. Our victor is on my, on my right. Sounds Anything you'd like to say about your victory? Uh, it's just when it comes to me and Trevor, this is normal for me. You know, I, I normally beat him. I, I don't know if you notice that mustache right there. It's just it's something that can't win. You can't win with that. So, uh, Sorry, I can grow facial hair. <laughs> you can't. And uh, would you like to? Yeah. When, when does your guys' season start? Uh, we start early January. We play USC, BYU, UC Irvine, the top three teams in the country right away, Division One. It's gonna be here. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I know you guys. A lot of you guys are on break, but you know, when you guys get back, it'd be awesome to see you at the game. All right, all right, thank you very much, guys. It's a pleasure. Um, that's our ramble back to you guys. Thank you. That is good stuff right there. Now, if you ask me, I'm sticking with the New Orleans Pelicans now. Ooh, you know, they got a new, new team, new nickname. It's going to be a whole new atmosphere there. They bring in my boy out of UCLA, Drew Holiday. Watch Drew. out for him. You pair him with Anthony Davis in his second year, I think that's going to be a dynamic like, duo right there. Look, the Pelicans, so intimidating, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those Pelicans. Little birds with the wings. Yeah. Look, you might have Drew Holiday. We got, my sleeper team has Uncle Drew. Uncle Drew! He gets buckets. Getting buckets. That's Kyrie Irving, and then you got the wild card, Andrew Bynum. He's coming back. Maybe Absolutely. If he finds the form of last year, or a couple years, years back, back, yeah. yeah they, could, they could really make some noise in the East, and you know, they might not fully wake up from that sleep on roll, no. but they're gonna, they're gonna wake up in the playoffs. A little bit, yeah. yeah we could, uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Have a nice little run there. Speaking of teams not to sleep on, that's how right. about women's volleyball here? You know, oh, as a team right now, they're, at, they're actually at a game right now at Missouri State, right. and so hoping to get a nice W there. Um, they have another conference match tomorrow against Wichita State. Wichita is going to be a, a big theme here. Right. Um, they're coming off two straight losses, unfortunately, but hopefully they can push themselves back up to 500. Now, you know a little bit about women's volleyball. A little bit. Tell uh, me. I am actually, let's disclose the bias right away. I'm the, I'm the beat reporter for the women's volleyball team for the Phoenix, so I got shouts out to Coach Musket and all the girls. Good luck at the game tonight. Um, but they're 8-11 right now, and it's a growing process. They're a really young team. They're really athletic. And on the offensive end, they got uh, freshman Morgan Reardon and sophomore Maureen Carls. They're killing it. Reardon was actually named freshman of the week, I believe, back-to-back -back weeks. Absolutely, I think. And um, they're, they're literally killing it. They, they, they have over 250 kills combined. And um, if they could stay the course and just find some more consistency, that's their big thing. Yeah. They're really talented. They're incredibly rawly talented and athletic. They just need to put it together on a on a weekend to weekend basis and really get things rolling in the right direction. And um, women's volleyball, they're still in the thick of their season. But men's and women's golf, they're pretty much wrapping up. Absolutely. So men's golf, they finished up the Dayton Flyer Invitational this Tuesday and they finished twelfth out of sixteen teams involved, which it wasn't their, exactly their brightest point in the season. Not the season. best, but we still got love for them. Let's not forget they were conference champs last year, the men's they team were. at least. Yeah. And they had, um, I think, I believe seven finishes in the top four this season, yeah. or five of their seven uh, tournaments. So senior Alex Guzmano, freshman Garrett Marschke, they both finished three over 73. And the team had a total of 596, which is actually 30 strokes off the lead. <laughs> and Chris, that actually sounds like one of my personal scores. You know, Joe, don't, don't try to give yourself too much credit here. It's probably a little more. Than probably maybe. a little bit higher. Yeah. As for the women, they wrapped up the Rocket Classic in Ohio, finishing 11th out of 13 teams. Sophomore Olivia Lindsay, she capped off her Tuesday with a, uh, with a score of 80, and she had a team low 240. Now, the women's team totaled 976, and that was 80. Five strokes off the lead that was set by Toledo. And you know what? I lied earlier. That's, yeah. that's a little more like I think that's probably more like it, yeah. That's a little more like yeah. my scores. But there's two tournaments left for the ladies. The next one is the Flyer Invitational that the men just finished out in Ohio. That'll start Monday. That's good stuff. And we're going to talk about another team that would actually be played on the grass, but it's actually at Hoyne Field, it might be the turf there now, I believe. Um, yeah. First of all, men's soccer. They had a game on Wednesday that they actually lost 2 0 to Denver. But let's keep in mind, Denver's a very good team. Oh, and yeah. something you can take away from this game that would be positive is sophomore goalie Tim Dobrovolsky actually. Got the name. Nice. Tim Dobrovolsky had four saves in the first 30 minutes, and they didn't allow a goal until the 45th minute of the game. Right. And so that's huge that you can take a team that 
their offense has just been flowing and shut them down for that long. So. Yeah, this is a team that has scored over, over four goals three times Absolutely, times yeah. Season. And we held them to two, and, let, and they were at the end of the game. So that's that's definitely a good thing to start. Um, unfortunately, the men's soccer team hasn't won a match since September 13th. It's been a while. Um, they have a game against Bradley tomorrow in Peoria, so I'm looking forward to that one. Try to improve on that record. Yeah. And women's soccer is in a little bit of a, of a slump of their own. Um, they're 0-3-1 in their last four matches. They took on Western Illinois earlier today, actually. And two of those matches that they played out of the last four have gone to double overtime. Of course. Guess what happened today? Um, overtime. You'd be correct. Okay. They finished one to one, and uh, Mariah Schwartz, she had the uh, goal late in the second half to bring it to a one to one tie, but that's where it stayed. Now they're four, uh, four seven and five on the season after they, they racked up that tie. They'll travel to Drake on Wednesday for their next conference match. All right. Uh, we got one more sport for you. We're going to talk about men's and women's cross country. Uh, they actually left earlier today to head out to pre-nationals, which is a huge meet. Some of the best competition. Three of the top five teams in the nation are going to be there, including Oregon, Oklahoma State. So some of the best competition in the country. Um, they've been on a break in their competition to try to get rested up for this one. Um, they're going to be joining 160 other programs in Terre Haute, Indiana. So that's going to be a really good meet. And I'm really excited to see that. The men's and women's race is both going to be split up. There's a lot of teams there, yeah. You do a little bit of running yourself. Yeah, I'm actually on the track team here. So, so you're probably a little bit faster. I run a little bit faster, not to brag. But these guys could probably, you know, if I don't get away in the first quarter mile, it ain't going to happen. Right. So <laughs> these guys are no joke. They're a good team, and I really expect to see some great, great turnouts from this team this year. Right. And that's all well and good. We love all the Loyola sports here. Yeah. But now, let's get to the real reason why we're here. We're here to talk about really tall people throw leather through hoops. That's about the best way you can explain it. Absolutely. So there's been a lot of change this offseason, and probably the biggest one has been conference realignment. We're taking that step up to the Missouri Valley. And let's just talk a little bit about the improved competition. And we could start with Wichita State, who Absolutely, made the Final yeah. Four um, last season. And then also Creighton made the round of 32, where they lost to Duke, yeah, I believe. Yeah, knocked off by Duke, yeah. Right. We, we essentially replaced Creighton. So what do you think the competition is going to be like in this conference? Right? I mean, it's obviously going to be so much better. You look at the Horizon League, and there's just no teams. I mean, there's obviously one team that makes the tournament, but right. you never really see them do too much in it. Um, moving to the, the Valley now, we're, we see teams, like you said, Wichita going to the Final Four. It's just going to be a much better atmosphere to breed a winning culture here. And so right. I think it's definitely going to be a good step in the right direction. And the tradition is really strong in this conference. They're all Absolutely. about the basketball in this conference. Yeah. There's no football. There's a Missouri not. Valley football conference, but that's completely separate. Right. You have Arch Madness, which is the conference tournament. They treat that exactly like the national championship. People get so hyped for that. And it's just a really strong tradition. Larry Legend is one of the alums. Can't beat Larry Legend. Can't beat Larry Legend. I'm and a Lakers fan, and you can't beat Larry Legend. It's just basketball is the Missouri Valley's thing. Yeah. So we're taking a step in the right direction by joining this conference. Absolutely. And going along with just tradition, you know, this is that's how you build a winning culture in a program. And that's something that Loyola was in desperate need of. You know, right. you're a team that. They weren't known for their athletics, but now people think of Loyola, it's, it's on the rise, you know? Right. And I think the biggest move that we've made is the addition of our new women's basketball oh, coach. Was that, was you that? may have heard her name, I don't know. Those. I'm not sure. Cheryl, is it Swoops? Cheryl I think Swoops? It's, it's Swoops? Swoopies? Swoopies, Swoopies? with an E in there, Swoopies. yeah. Cheryl Swoops. Um, she's basically the Michael Jordan of women's basketball. Yeah. Let me just run through this little resume real quick before I don't want to mess anything up. Three time Olympic gold medalist with Team USA. Three times. We're good. Four straight WNBA championships from 97 to 2000. Pretty sure MJ didn't even do that one. MJ won three in a row, never right. four. Right. She won four. Six-time All-Star, three-time MVP. That's, that's a resume right there. That's, that's pretty one. good. Yeah. That's pretty good. So I'm really excited to see what, what she brings in. She's going to have you back. Uh, yeah. I actually believe one of our very own is down with her right now, so we're going to send it out to Megan Caravelli. Megan, what you got? Well, this isn't quite the court that you're thinking of. We had a little bit of te technical difficulties over at the Rambler Sports Soccer for Midnight Madness, but don't worry, we still brought you the one and only Coach Cheryl Swoops of the women's basketball team. Coach Swoops, this team is coming off, you know, their first trip to the league championship. How are you gonna top that this season? You know, I think for me coming into the season, having known the things that the team accomplished last year, um, it's not so much about topping what they did last year, but hopefully building off of that. Um, the momentum that, that they have coming off of the Horizon League championship game, hopefully we can bring that momentum into the beginning of this season and, and improve and get better. You know, you can never be satisfied with just being good um, or just being okay. You always have to have a goal, always have to have things you want to strive for. We know we got a lot of work to do moving into the Missouri Valley, and, you know, hopefully we can use some of that momentum coming off the Horizon League championship going into uh, our season this year. And what are you focusing mostly on this season? 
Um, everything. Um, I, for us, our biggest thing that we want to focus on and we stress every single day is defense. We want to be not only the best defensive team in the Missouri Valley, um, we want to be the best defensive team in the nation. You know, I believe in setting goals high and, and working hard to achieve those goals. And, you know, we've been practicing for about four weeks now, and we haven't, we have not had an offensive practice. All of our practices have been um, very defensive oriented, defensive minded. Um, you know, we don't right now have enough tools to outscore teams offensively, uh, but I do think we have enough, enough tools to stop teams defensively, and that's really been, been our focus. And the girls seem to really be buying into where we're trying to, to take this team and, and how we're trying to change the program. And what do you think is going to be the biggest difficulty that you're going to run into? Oh, man. Um, you know, I probably can't say there's just one. Um, you know, as a, as a player, I don't think you really necessarily worry about all the things that go into preparing for an opponent. And as a player, I always felt like I could just go on the court and get the job done. Um, as a coach, it's very different. You know, I now, I, I can no longer get out on the floor and, and get the job done myself. You know, as a staff, we have to do everything we can possibly do in practices and video and scouting to get the players ready and make sure they're, they're ready and prepared for the game. And, you know, I think one of my biggest challenges is going to be just, just the patience, you know, and, and teaching the game and making sure that the players understand what it is we're trying to teach them and, and just be patient and know that it's going to be a process. But that's the competitor in me. You know, I want to come out from the very beginning and, and, and I want to win. I want to do well. And I think we all are on the same page. But so far I found that my biggest challenge is, is being patient and honestly just trying to, to pray every day and, and keep my players healthy. Keeping them healthy. That's good. Absolutely. Well, good luck to you on that. We're going to send it back to you guys at the desk, back through time travel to Midnight Madness. Back to you guys. All right, so Coach Swoops is going to have a lot to build around. This team is based around their defense. Absolutely. And they finished 10-6 and six in the conference last season, 17-15 overall, so they were over 500. They made it to the Horizon League tournament. They got knocked off in the championship game by Green Bay. Um, and... That kind of left the sour taste, and also the departure of two mainstays. We got Monica Albano and Abby Scooby are gone from this program. Great shooters, absolutely. And last year they were kind of being they were kind of being ushered out a little bit, and we saw that the new core right. going forward was going to be last year a freshman and a sophomore in Taylor Johnson and Simone Law. Now they got another year under their under their belt. What do you think they could do for this team going forward? I think this year is going to be huge for them. I mean. Like you said, we had a freshman and a sophomore last year. Anytime you have a core that that's, that's that young and effective, and you give them a couple more years and new leadership, such as Cheryl Swoops, it's hard to top that. They're, they're going to have a huge jump right now, and I expect Taylor Johnson to be one of the best players in the conference right. this year, as well as Simone Long. They're both they're both fantastic. Because they're great, they're great on both ends of the floor. Yeah. You were talking about Taylor's defense in the press yesterday. Yeah, there were several times where I would be at a game, and I would see them send Johnson on a one-man full-court press, and she would get a stop just about every time, whether it's a steal and a layup the other way. She's, she's so good. Basically a one-man double team. Yeah, absolutely. So Taylor holds it down up top. You got Simone anchoring the defense down low. Simone, she dealt with some injuries last season, but I'm pretty sure that's the furthest thing from her mind right now. So we have Bridget Sheeran standing courtside to find out exactly what is on her mind. Bridget? Well, technical difficulties always happen twice. So I am once again here with Simone Law of the women's basketball team, and we're going to ask some questions. So first of all, what kind of expectations do you have for this team going into this year? Well, we have a lot of expectations. We want to show the Missouri Valley that we are a contender this year and that we, Loyola has something to prove. So. We're excited. Do you have expectations for yourself? I always do. I always try to challenge myself, but I'm trying to be a better leader and captain for my team this year. So whatever happens, happens. I'm trying to push my team and myself to the best. And what does Coach Swoops bring to this team that wasn't there before? Just her background in general. Like being in a WNBA, being the woman Michael Jordan is like amazing. It's crazy having her as a coach. So just having her here just motivates everyone to push themselves. And you guys went to Italy this year, and you seem like you're a really close team. Did the trip to Italy help you guys bond together? I think it did a lot, actually, because Italy is just an amazing experience in itself. So just going over there, getting to sightsee, just bonding together, it was really special. Something that we'll never forget. Great. Thank you very much. Back to you guys at the desk. So, you know, we're hoping that maybe to help build that offense, uh, the winner of this year's three-point challenge, oh, three-point yeah. contest could we help that. Yeah, we have some very good sharpshooters down there. And we actually have our very own Benjamin Shaken, who's down there with the winner. So let's send it down to Benjamin. Bailey Farley, so what's it like to win the three-point contest at the beginning of the year? It feels really good coming in as a freshman and being able to do that, but... Um, 
just wanted to come out and represent my team well. And what was the trip to Italy like? It was amazing. It was one of the best experiences of my life, hands down. And uh, how do you see the season going forward? What? Sorry. How do you see the season going forward? Oh, I think we're going to do really great this season. We have been training so hard since the end of June, so I think we'll definitely be in the best shape of any team we come up with. Okay, thank you very much. Then back to this, I'm Benjamin Schenken. Well, thanks, Ben. Now we're going to switch our attention to the men's team. They finished 15 and 16 overall. They were a game under. The women's team was two overs. So the men were under. They're, they're about, they're about five. Even, yeah. right. They're five eleven in conference. That was that was their big black eye. Their, their conference play. Yeah. And now that we're taking a step up, that might be an even bigger weakness that can be exploited in the Missouri Valley Conference. So we're going to have to watch the conference. The conference games are going to be key games. Pretty much every single conference game. Yeah. And um, they were bouncing the first round of the Horizon League tournament last year by Youngstown State. And they're stepping up this year, and they're also losing Ben Averkamp and Jordan Hicks, which were the program. Yeah. They're still on For the years. banner outside. I see their faces every day as I walk to class. Advertising the last championship. They're still on that banner, and I mean, their legacy, sure, that's all good and well, but they're gone from the block now. They are. We need a big man to step up down low. Where do you think the consensus is going to come? You know, we need a big man to step up, and I think we have just the guy. Last year, at the time, sophomore. Christian Thomas, now he's a junior, at the end of the season he came up huge, you know, he, he started every game for us and his rebounding numbers were incredible for his size. He's an undersized power forward, right? but he plays as if he's 6'8 or something, you know. He averaged about 6.5 rebounds last year, but I expect to see that number go way up. He had 7 double-doubles last year, that's most in Loyola's history going back to 2004. So I expect to see him step up as our main player this year. He's also he's named the preseason, preseason yeah, yeah, Valley yeah. Um, all team, all preseason all team. Yeah, all yeah. There you go. I had a hard time with that one. <laughs> also, Cyrus <laughs> Dobrovolsky. Dobrovolsky. Also, um, current sophomore Devin Turk had a phenomenal freshman year. Yeah, he yeah. led the Horizon League in three-point field goal percentage with 43%, and I oh, would no. love to see that even go. His range, he is in the gym range. Yeah. He walks in the little tunnel out there, and he's in range. He's in it's amazing. And so I expect to see him at least come out a he little further. three and the first 10 games he ever played and the final 13 of the season. Yeah. At least one. Yeah. So expect more of this. He's going to go down as a huge player. And also, we've got to watch who's going to be Jeff Kiki White. Last year, he was kind of in a backup role behind Cully Payne. But this year, I expect to see him be the feature. He gone. He gone. I expect to see him be the feature point guard in our system and maybe be a very good distributor for us. Uh, right. He's incredibly quick, and he's good on both sides of the ball. So I, I expect huge things out of him. Right. Getting those steals. And yeah. those players aren't the only ones returning to the roster. No. We got Porter Moser coming back as the head coach for his third year already. Man, dude, time flies. Time flies. I'm looking forward to some more years of the, the, the Moser squat. squat. The Porter yeah. squat. Yeah. So, Porter's a pretty, uh, Porter. Porter, Porter Moser's a pretty intense guy, hitting that squat all the time. We got a pretty intense guy courtside with him, Nick Amatangelo. We're going to see exactly how intense and amped he is for this season. All right, I'm Nick Amatangelo, joined courtside by Coach Porter Moser. Now, Coach Moser, where did you learn to dance like that? I haven't learned. It was just, I was just having fun. You know, like I told the students, I'll do anything to get this arena going, excited, electrified, because it could be the best venue in Chicago on campus. And when this thing is full, it's so noisy, and uh, so I just had fun with it. I'm not a good dancer, that's for sure. All right, now we saw a marked improvement in year two over year one. What do we need to do to keep that up, especially as we enter a much more high-profile conference. Well, we got to we got to improve in a lot of areas. Defensively is one of them. We got to be better. But the leadership, you know, we're a very young team. We're one of the youngest teams in the country, and we got a lot of guys. We, we you know we could be starting. We got 11 freshmen and sophomores, so we got to mature quickly. You know, in game situations, learn how to you know the situations of decision making and shot selection and but I think defensively is going to be the biggest key because this league is really good. All right, how will Milton Doyle help us get to the next level? You know, Milton every day has been improving and we're expecting a lot out of him, but we got to kind of temper it. He's still never played a college game before. So, I think it's something that uh, we're excited about him. I think he's really doing well, but again, he's never played a college game before, so I'm trying to little temper, but he he's really really gives us another dimension of athleticism. All right, well, thank you so much, Co Coach. Best of luck in the season. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Nick. You know, yeah. yeah. It appears Coach Porter is going to have a lot of new toys to play with this right. year, in addition to the returning guys. You know, he's got four, essentially, freshmen, two are red shirts. Um, we have guard Jordan Pickett from Indiana. He was actually ranked as one of Indiana's top guards coming out yep. of high school, so I'd look for him to do some big things in the future. 
Um, Jeremy King, he's a large man. It's listed at 6'10", but I've stood next to him. I think he's close to 6'11", pushing 7". Mm. He's a big boy. It's KD. And, yeah, it's KD. And I expect to see him have some potential impact this year as a nice dominant force down low on defense. But well, there's one. There's one guy who's been stealing our attention, and we've been waiting to see him. Who is that? Exactly. Just like I talked about earlier, this could be Milton Doyle, the, the beginning of his era here oh, yeah. at Gentile Arena. When it's all said and done, he might be, he's being hyped up to be possibly the best Rambler to ever don a loyal uniform. Now let's keep in mind, we did have someone get drafted first overall in the NBA, so let's hope so. And people people like to state that he's probably the worst number one overall draft pick. No disrespect to LaRue, he did work no. in college. Not so much in the NBA. Not so much. Let's see what Milton can do in college, though, because right now it's still all hype. He redshirted. He was recruited by Bill Self in Kansas. Now, if you're getting recruited by a top program That's like big that, time. You're doing, some, you're doing some pretty good things. Yeah. He redshirted his first year because of eligibility, but he played his high school ball right around the corner, actually, at Marshall High School. He's a local kid. He's got skills across the board. Yeah. He's got bounce. He's got range. He's got defense. And we're just going to see a lot. We hope to see a lot out of him because he's going to get playing time early and off. Absolutely, especially that bounce. I'm excited to see that bounce. All right, we can probably see it tonight at the dunk contest. Oh, absolutely. And much has been said about Milton, but let's actually get Milton's take on what he thinks about all the hype. We have Bridget Murphy standing courtside to get Milton's take. Thanks, guys. I'm down here with uh, Milton Doyle, who is the MVC preseason freshman of the year. Uh, congratulations, Milton. And um, now I know there's been a lot of hype about your play this season because you transferred and you had to sit out last year. So um, what kinds of things have you been hearing from critics, like experts, coaches, or other teams, like about your performance this year? I haven't really heard anything that much, just to go out there and play my game and just keep a straight hit. Um, now, since you got that honor and now people are looking at you to perform, is that a lot of pressure or how do you deal with that in your game? I don't think it's a lot of pressure. I think it's just something that I expect of myself just to play hard every game and go out there. And now, how excited are you to be a Loyola Rambler? I'm very excited. Since I set out all last year, my first time to really play college basketball, so I'm ready. Oh, we're really, really glad to have you. So thank you for talking to us and back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Bridget. Now, now we all know Milton Doyle is calling card right now. Oh yeah, he's getting buckets. He gets buckets. Let me tell you something though. I get buckets. Chris, you don't get buckets. Joe, I get buckets. No, no, no. Let's roll, let's roll the clip. clip. Let's roll the clip. Yeah. No, no, no. All right. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. See, you're. That's the wrong video. That's not the right video. You're, you're I got a bucket buckets. once. No. No, I, I highly doubt that. That's the only video you get us. Hey. Whatever you want to believe. All right. Well. Whether or not I get buckets is another story, but there are some guys down there who definitely get they, buckets. They do, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna go courtside right now for the three-point contest winner. I'm here with Devin Turk, so what's it like to win the three-point contest? All right, that was real big. Me and Matt, we, we're rivals, man. I, I gotta be mad every time, man. He's gonna, he's gonna be mad that, I, that he sees this, but I had to be mad O'Leary, man. He's never beat me. And, I know that right now. Um, are, what, uh, how do you think the season's gonna turn Oh, uh, we're way better than last year. We got a lot more scoring options, um, better at defense. We just picked up a lot of areas that we needed to pick up in, so we're going to be way much better this year. Okay, thank you very much. I'm Benjamin Shankin. Send it back to the desk. Actually, Midnight Madness isn't the only preseason event on the docket. We have it's the not. annual maroon and gold scrimmage coming up. That's on October 22nd. I'm excited for that one. That's gonna, Yeah, and why not come out here and see the, the team, you know, brush up right before their conference docket starts. They got free admission, 7 p.m. Yep. What else are you doing at 7 p.m.? Nothing else. Come on out to the Joe. We got free admission, open to the public, and you can enjoy some good old Ramble basketball. Yep. A little bit after that, we actually have the Chicago College Hoops tip-off luncheon, where That's we're going to see, yeah, Try that again. We're going to have Loyola, Chicago State, DePaul, Northwestern, and UIC all in one place to have a little luncheon. We don't have to eat with them, though. Oh, absolutely not. No. Okay, good. Don't eat with the competition. Right. Eat the competition, boy. Mm. Mm. Uh, Coach delicious. Moser and Swoops are going to take part in a panel discussion where they're going to talk about the upcoming season. There's going to be a media day session only and then a lunch starting at 1130. Tickets are $55 a person. Sounds like a blast. And Great event. you know who I wouldn't be surprised in the least to see at that luncheon? Who's that? Men's basketball chaplain, Sister Jean. She is about that basketball She's about life. that life. She's everything Loyola basketball. And we spoke with everyone's favorite Rambler courtside to get her take on this year's madness. Thanks, Joe. We're here with Sister Jean right now, and she's going to judge the dunk contest this year. How did, <laughs> this is your second year, right, Sister Jean? That's correct. Yeah, second year. I'm looking forward to it, because, but I hope nobody gets hurt. How is So what are you looking forward to this year during this year's um, season? Uh, the fact that we're going to grow, we're going to do better, we're going to work hard, 
we're going to play well. We're in a tough league, but we're, we accept the challenge of being there. Great, so what is, what's your ideal kind of dunk? Pardon me? Your ideal dunk. Like, what do you look forward to when you're judging the dunk contest? I, I like to see how far they can get off the ground, or how, and sometimes I like to see if they have two people doing it and how well they can coordinate to, to complete the dunk. All right, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, back to you guys upstairs. So now, I'm sure, as we see Sister Jean everywhere, I'm sure she'll also be at the men's only exhibition game, which is actually going to take place November 2nd here against Lewis in the Gentile Arena. Um, tip offs at three. Now the women only have an, one exhibition tilt as well against UW Parkside on Sunday, November 3rd at 2. So I'm excited for these games. Can't sleep in on either of no. those days, man. Those are no, early tip-offs. All right, let's talk about the games that matter. Women's, their main test is going to come right away. They are yeah. playing the women's runner-up in, uh, uh, in the NCAA tournament. Last year it was Louisville. Right. They're going to play them right off the bat. We're going to see what this team is made of right away. And for the men, their tests are going to come early and often. They play two games against number 16, Wichita State, and pretty much every conference game is going to be a test. Yeah. What, are you, what are your expectations for this season? For you know, games? the competition is going to be hard, but I think we're up to it this year. You know, whether or not we end up being the team that ends up winning the conference, going to the tournament, or whatever, I think we're going to make some noise. And right. whether it happens, you know, this year or a couple years down the road, we definitely have the pieces needed to be good. You know, so I'd expect to see both the guys and the girls be competitive in the conference, whether or not they actually end up, you know, doing. That will. Right. right. I see them right about, right about, both right about 500 yeah. again. Maybe a little bit over, pushing in that conference tournament, yeah. and then down the road a little bit. Two, three yeah. years is when we're going to see things being perennial. Yeah. So that's what we think. Right. But you know, there's one person that probably has a lot to know to talk about on this topic. Yeah. Now, everyone's always been curious about what the fox says. Yeah. What does the fox? Say? I don't know. I don't know what he says, but I'm really curious to find out what the wolf says. What does so the we're going to go say? down courtside with Leia and Grace to see if what Lou Wolf has to say about this topic. What does the wolf say? Thanks guys, we're here with Lou Wolf, the one and only. All right, not only is it Midnight Madness, but it's also a full moon tonight. So how are you feeling? Pretty good, pretty good, nice. Okay, so this is Loyola's first season in the Missouri Valley Conference. How do you think we're gonna come out this year? All right, number one, sounds good. So have you been working on any new tricks for the season that you'd like to show the fans? All right, <laughs> thank you for that. So make sure you come out to Loyola's first homecoming to come see the one and only Lou Wolf. Back to you guys upstairs. What? Just gripping, gripping, in-depth, yeah. articulate. Motivating. He, he's always never had a loss for it. Absolutely. Lou just always, and the one point he kept driving home was the athleticism on this. Team. That's what I was seeming to get from that too, yeah. Right, and there's no better place to show off athleticism than a dunk contest. We all love to see None that better. bounce. Yeah. Who you got tonight? You know, I just have to go with the repeat champ here. Doyle won it last year, he jumped over Kiki White, and I just expect him to let loose this year and really go after it, you know? Yeah. I just don't see anyone taking it from him. The main competition, Nick Osborne, I think he's a little bit caught up with trying to take his shirt off. Yeah, he's trying to keep, keep that keep on this time. On. Yeah, definitely. Keep the shirt on, Nick, it might work out better for you. <laughs> Stay tuned for all the highlights from this dunk contest and an interview with the winner with our own Julia Sports.
guys, I am here with the new Dunk Countess champion, Nick Osborne. How does it feel to take the win from your teammate from last year, Milton Doyle, beat him out? Tell me a little bit about that. Sweet revenge. I feel good. Um, yeah, I hit, last year I missed a few dunks. This year I finished all my dunks, so it feels pretty good right now. I have to say, I think some of the girls were wondering, where the shirt off? Why did that happen this year? Remember it from last year. Where was it this time? I, don't, I, I couldn't be generic. I had to mix it up a little bit, you know. I, just, I don't want to show off or anything. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. All right, well, why don't you tell us a little bit how you prepare for one of these contests? What do you go through today? What was going through your head? Just a lot of stretching and uh, mental preparation. Just be uh, kind of get pumped up, you know, so you can jump high and just have fun. Definitely. So walk me through. When you have the ball in your hands and you're going for the net, what are you thinking at that moment? Just go up as strong as I can and throw it down as hard as I can. You know, just um, I try to picture the defense, just try to go up strong so nobody can take the ball in my hand. All right, so you probably couldn't do this alone. Was there anyone out there who was helping you out get the win? Yeah, I want to give a big shout out to Joe Chrisman. He's a, he's a great passer, as you guys can see. He's a great teammate and a great guy. So. Definitely. Well, I think that confidence is going to bring him going strong through the season. We wish you a lot of luck and congratulations. Right. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jillian. You know, those dunks are really nothing too special. I can do that. Oh, yeah? On a nerf rim? Uh, no, Fisher Price, actually. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Fisher Price is good. Um, it actually appears that they're doing the musical chairs right now, so I'm excited to see how that turns out. That'll be fun. That always gets a little interesting. Um, we're, having a, we're having a blast right here, and that's all we got for now. But I hope you guys at home had as much fun as we did here. It was a great time, and we're looking forward to next year. Um, so do us a favor and check us out on our social media handles below. Um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you got, all the kids get on it. Yeah. yeah, ask your kids what they're on and get on it. And you know what, Chris? We had this exact same problem last year. What's that, Joe? I asked a lot of people, and we literally cannot turn out the lights. We can't turn out the lights. We can't turn out the lights. Something, turn... about, something about the players needing to see while they're playing basketball. Why do they need that? I really think it's overrated. When you're playing ball out there in the alley like I did back in the day, yeah. lights go out, you still got to play ball. Back basketball in the day. goes on, man. Yeah, it goes on people all the time. People are going to dunk over you if you stop playing and the lights yeah, go no, out. You just got to keep going. That's just a no-go. Anyways. That'll, that'll do it here <laughs> from Joe. I'm Joe Flaherty, that is. I'm Chris Lehman, and we're going to go ahead and apparently leave the lights on for you guys. So while we're at it, check out all these highlights that we've gathered from tonight. How many boxes of pizza do you think we have? We ordered 70 pizzas. Rambler fans, gold ramblers. I support your teams. 